Since 1991, this author has been in contact with various victims of implants. The natural first reaction of many initial listeners would be skepticism to the subject. The psychological profession has had articles in their professional journals ridiculing these poor victims. If a fair-minded person will match the experiences of what one can witness happening to these implant victims, as well as their evidence, to the cutting edge of what science is researching and capable of doing, then there is no doubt that implants are being used on an ever-increasing mass scale. The world order is using amplifiers, generators, electronics, listening devices, non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation, a snapping type sound energy that hits and burns the body, closed circuit videos to monitor implant victims, nanotechnology, and tracking devices that scanners, including mobile handheld scanners, can pick up just to name a few. This chapter will provide an in-depth overview of many of these electronic mind control gadgets. Unfortunately, the twilight zone of Big Brother is upon us. People, such as limousine drivers, that have been around the movers and shakers report that they brag about these technological controls. The technology described in this chapter, such as nanobots, and holographic implants are in the R&D stage of use. What is meant by R&D stage means that the world order is using a large variety of experimental items, but the reader should be forewarned that this does not mean that these items are any indication of where the world order's actual secret R&D is at. This author has worked with enough mind control victims to have established several facts. They are in reality only disclosing what has been known in secret, and their discoveries are actually helping cover up where the world order's secret research is at. However, it's not difficult to see the direction the world order is headed. They are working at making virtual reality, aka cyberspace, the in thing. They are fusing the human mind to computers. Computers slash robots are taking over human jobs, and humans are becoming more like computers slash robots. Sci-fi gurus, cyberpunks, and establishment scientists are selling and advertising this technological direction as freedom, and the crowds of sheep are accepting things like brain implants as survival equipment and freedom. The cool technological pied pipers of our time are teaching our children that gadgets that remove their minds from reality are giving them new freedoms. But this chapter is written because there are still a few people with the neural receptors and the computing capacity left in their craniums to comprehend the dangers that these mind-controlling devices have for humanity. Witnesses have told me that the creation of Robocop-type cybergs, the fusion of man and other equipment, has already been experimented on in secret. Indeed, the government gave out research contracts for cyberg research back in the 1960s. And the use of electromagnetic waves, especially Tesla waves, implants, and other electronic devices by the Illuminati for mind control is on the increase. How much of a genuine threat do these things pose humanity? I'll spell it out for the reader, but we must remain calm. A fear-based response only makes things worse. Yes, it is true that the NSA can remotely track people if they know the specific EMF waves, evoked potentials from EEGs in the 30 to 50 Hz, 5 milliwatt range, of a person's bioelectric field. Each person's emissions are unique, just like their fingerprint, palm print, and their voice print. This means that the NSA can remotely track anyone in public. And yes, it is true that the NSA's RNM system can remotely send EMF brain stimulation signals which create visual images, subliminal audios, what appear to be audible sounds, and thoughts into people's minds. Yes, it is true that body suits of implants are used to control people's minds and bodies, as well as track them. Yes, it is true they have voice prints of hundreds of thousands of Americans and can identify and track via their computers all electronic communications in this nation. Most phone calls go through about 30 computers before they reach their destination. The phone company's computers, according to someone who worked for AT&T and witnessed it, record all phone calls using computers. However, to weed out the worthless from the worthwhile, the Illuminati's fronts use a list of key words, such as names or phrases called the watch list which the computer uses to identify conversations worthwhile to listen to.